Use either a table or a graph to determine the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. I'm thinking AP pre-calculus thoughts. Now that AP pre-calculus exists, we dealt a lot with holes and asymptotes and zeros and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the numerator, I'm going to factor the denominator, and I'm going to see what I get. Two numbers that add up to negative 2 and multiply out to negative 3 are going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. Two numbers that multiply out to negative 5, I'm sorry, add up to negative 5 and multiply out to 6 are going to be x minus 3, x minus 2. Now this is what we have. What we have is a whole at x equals 3. We have a 0 at x equals negative 1, and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. We also know that since the leading coefficient up here is x squared and the leading coefficient is x squared, that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at x squared over x squared, which is 1. So what I could do is I can make a little rough sketch of this. Okay, if I knew how to draw a nice straight line, this would be a whole lot better. But this is basically, you get what you pay for, and you pay absolutely nothing for my services. So if the horizontal asymptote is 1, that means things are going to level out right here. Okay, uh, this has a 0 at, where was my 0? At negative 1, so I have a 0 at negative 1. Okay, a vertical asymptote at 2, so we'll put a vertical asymptote here. And since everything kind of levels out here at, um, everything levels out here at positive one, we are going to get a picture that looks like this. Like that, and then like that. Now, somewhere over here at three, I'm going to get my hole. So there's three. Now, there's my graph. There's my graph. So using this graph, I can kind of come up with a nice little estimate of what this would be. But you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to use just my graph. I'm actually going to use the fact, since these guys are this, they cancel out. And so that leaves me with the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 1 over x minus 2. Plug in 3. 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 2, and that gets me 4 over 1. So my limit's going to be 4, and I can kind of see that. Now, granted, my picture is absolutely not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but using the picture that I made, I can kind of look at this and say, oh, yeah, I guess I can see where that old crazy math guy came up with that. So that's what I got. Have fun with it. Which of the following piecewise functions satisfy these conditions? The limit as x approaches 1 from the left has to be 5. When you plug in 1, you get 3. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right is 1. So basically, uh, what I need, and it looks like all I have here are just regular old numbers, what I need is the fact that as, as it's approaching 1 from the left, you get 5. So f of x is going to be some type of 5 when x is less than 1. When you plug in 1, you get 3. And when its x is greater than 1, because it's approaching it from the right side, you get 1. So a is going to be my option for that one. Now, usually these might be a little bit more complicated. Maybe these are some functions, and you might have to plug stuff in and do some math, but this was a simplified version of it, and I'm not going to complain at all. No one likes piecewise functions anyway. Which of the following options is the correct answer? We are being asked to find the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Well, if I were to just quote unquote plug in 3, I'd get 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. That's no good. So what I have to do is I have to factor the top because it's a difference of squares. x plus 3 
x minus 3 over x minus 3. The factors of x minus 3 cross out. So now I can just take the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. Now that means I plug in 3 into the equation. When I plug in 3, I get 3 plus 3, which is 6. So the limit as x approaches 3 of that rational function right there is 6. I'm done!